fast track team for dynamics. We'll start the session with a quick overview, followed by things to be aware of, and we will end the session with a live demo. So there is a trigger in Power Automate when HTTP request is received. This trigger allows users to call a flow from the third party applications. The trigger automatically generates an endpoint or a URL that application can call. Until now, anyone with the access to the URL and associated JSON schema could trigger this flow. Developers used to use header keys, query strings, trigger conditions, relative path, and sometimes putting these flows behind the APAM to secure these endpoints. The good news is we have recently introduced OAuth authentication for HTTP request trigger. As you can see in the screenshot, we have an option who can trigger the flow. There are three available options for the authentication parameter. Any user in my tenant, specific users in my tenant, and anyone is a legacy option. Anyone with access to the URL can trigger this flow. If you decide to go with one of the first two options, which means only authenticated users can call this flow, then you have to pass the following claims with your HTTP request. The first one is audience. Sometimes people refer this as scope. This is one of the most important one. These are the available values based on the cloud type you're working in. The second one is ISS. It's authentication provider. The third one is the tenant ID. The fourth one is the object ID of the calling user. This is optional. It's only required if you go with the second option to restrict your flow only to specific users within the tenant. So there are a couple of things I want to share with you that I have learned during my testing. The first one is related to the audience. The specific service.flow.marksoft.com backslash URL, it works in some scenarios, but not in others. For example, when I tried to get the authentication token in Postman, it didn't work. I have to add two backslash to default at the end of the URL to get the proper authentication token. The second one is related to service principles. If you try to restrict your HTTP request trigger to specific users in your tenant, then you have to provide the email address or the object ID of the user in your allowed users text box. Specifically for service principle, when you register your app, you can see you can get this object ID in app registration. So this is not the object ID you should be using in your allowed users here. You should be using the one in enterprise applications. So I have created this sample flow for this demo. Anyone can trigger this flow. It's a legacy behavior. If you look at the URL, you can see there's a SAS token at the end of the URL. So if you have access to this URL, you can trigger this flow. So I'm going to try that now. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to try to run this in Postman. So, so this is a URL. I'm passing something in the body in the JSON format. And I'm going to run this request now. As you can see, there are no issues, no errors here. Let's have a look at the flow. So it's successful. Now I have modified this flow to any user in my tenant. So now the user has to be in my tenant. So he has to be authenticated user to, to run this flow, to execute this flow. So if you look at the URL, there is no more SAS token at the end of the URL. So I'm gonna copy this, try to run this now from the postman. So I'm not using any sort of authentication, so it should fail. As you can see, there is a failure. Direct API authorization required. So you can't run this. You have to pass the authentication now. So I tried a couple of things. So I created this another flow here. So I manually triggered this flow, and I'm using HTTP action to qualify it to call my original flow. So if I added this flow, you can see 
I'm using Active Directory or Auth. This is a default authentication provider. That's the tenant ID, which is required. The audience, have a look at this. You have to put a backslash, otherwise it will fail. You, plot, you pass the client ID of your service principal, and then you have to pass the secret. You save this. Now, if you test it, it should work because you're passing the claim. So it's successful. Let's try to do the same thing in a postman. So here, I'm trying to get the authentication token. I'm using these endpoints. You can get these endpoints from your service principal or app registration here. If you click on endpoints, you can get the URL. So I'm getting authentication tokens. I'm using this one. So you can get this. That's the URL I'm using here to get the authentication token. Then I'm passing these values in my body. The grant type is client credential. Then I'm passing client ID, client secret, then the scope. So have a look at this. I have to pass this to get the authentication token. If I don't pass this first, you won't get the authentication token. So there's an error, but if you add backslash, backslash dog default, now you got the authentication token. I'm going to use this authentication token to call the endpoints again. So here, So this is my endpoint. I'm using authorization beta token and I'll copy pasting that token here. Let's try. As you can see, it's successful again. There are no errors. Let's have a look at the flow. Look at this 40 seconds ago, it was successful. Now the last scenario, I have modified the flow for specific users in my tenant. I want to use uh, the service principle, so I have to provide the object ID here. If you want to add multiple users, you can put a semicolon and add another grid or the email address of the user. So just for the service principles again, so here, if you look at my app registration, I'm not passing this object ID. I have to go to the enterprise applications and find my SPN, and I have to pass this object ID here. Now press save. Try to run this again from the floor first. As you can see, your flow ran successfully, so there are no issues. I'm going to try to do the same thing from the Postman. Here, I'm on the same screen again. I'm using the same barrier token. Nothing changed. Send request. As you can see, there are no issues. Before I finish this session, 
I want to show you this authentication token one more time. So if you want to look at what's in this authentication token, you can copy that. Go to jwt.io. So here, I'm going to paste my token and you can see the values here. The audience, the backslash is very important. Just remember that. You can see the OID here too. So that's how you call a secure HTTP trigger. Thanks for joining the session. I hope this